Once again, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, classmates. I'm Giselle, and together with my groupmates, we are going to talk all about the K-12 Curriculum Guide and Health Education for Grade Level 5. Now, let's start with the K-12 Curriculum Guide and Health Education Standard for Grade Level 5. Here are the standards for Grade 5. As we can see, there are two standards for Grade 5, the K-Stage Standard and the Grade Level Standard. Going back to the definition, K-Stage Standard refers to the quality of proficiency that the learner is able to demonstrate in each case stage. Based on the curriculum guide, the grade 5 learners will demonstrate an understanding of how which part of growth and development as well as the impact of various health practices that will help an individual to achieve and sustain optimum health and well-being. The second standard will be the grade level standards. As a recall, grade level standard refers to the learning standard and academic expectation for a particular grade. Based on the curriculum guide, the grade 5 learners will demonstrate an understanding about the nature and personal health, growth and development, the substance use and abuse, as well as the community and environmental health which help to achieve optimum health and well-being. The next part will be the content discussion of K-12 basic education curriculum, particularly for health education in grade 5, which will be tackled by Ms. Jean and Ms. Bob. That would be all my part. Thank you for listening. Once again, this is Miss Jean Fleur and I will tackle some parts of the grade 5 first quarter curriculum. So first, we have the content. So under the content, we have personal health. So number one, mental, emotional, and social health. So these are important because it serves to enhance your general well-being. It will help to refresh mood, improve lifestyle, and reduces stress and anxiety. Number two, healthy and unhealthy relationships. Relationships play a key part in every child or young, young person's well-being. Healthy relationships can help a child feel secure and supported, but unhealthy relationships can have a long-lasting negative impact. Number three, mental, emotional, and social health concerns. So these affect how children cope with life's challenges and stresses. Number four, preventing and managing mental, emotional, and social health concerns. It helps children build positive social, emotional, behavior, thinking, and communication skills. So for the content standards, the learner demonstrates understanding of mental, emotional, and social concerns. On performance standards, the learner practices skills in managing mental, emotional, and social health concerns. So, let's proceed to the learning competencies. Number one, describes a mentally, emotionally, and socially healthy person. So, how do we describe this person? So, they are this kind of person that feel good about themselves and they do not become overwhelmed by emotions such as fear, anger, love, jealousy, guilt, and anxiety. Number two, suggest ways to develop and maintain one's mental and emotional health. So, in my research, talking about their feelings, keeping active, eating well, drinking sensibly, keeping in touch, asking for help, taking a break, doing something you're good at, and accepting who you are are some suggestions to develop one's mental and emotional health. And number three, recognizes signs of healthy and unhealthy relationships. And that would be all for my part, and let's go back to Miss Donna for the continuation of the report. 
Hi, it's me again, Donna. I'm here to discuss with you the learning competencies under health from 4 to 9. So let's begin first with number 4. Explains how healthy relationships can positively impact health. So it promotes learners' mindset to become healthier and dealing with others by encouraging them with positive benefits over health including lower rates of anxiety and depression, higher self-esteem, greater empathy, and more trusting and cooperative relationships. On the other hand, telling them healthy relationships can also help to strengthen their immune system, help them recover from diseases, and may even lengthen their life. In doing this, they can internalize and imitate what has been said that they will do self-regulation in dealing with people. So let's proceed for number 5. Discusses ways of managing unhealthy relationships. So this time the learners are taught that not all people they are encountered are the same as good as them. However, it could be varied with different ways to manage it and to develop self-awareness by giving them some techniques on how to avoid this kind of situation. And to number six, describe some mental, emotional, and social health concerns. At this pace, the learners are being oriented to be cautious of their health that any time could change their life. Sadness and anxiety are normal emotions that help us alert to, protect us from, and cause us to act. This is healthy. What is unhealthy is when these feelings become excessive, irration, um, irrational, ongoing, distressing, or enter with daily life. Depression, anxiety, stress, grief can be managed using intervention and strategies such as cognitive behavior therapy, relaxation sometimes on the beach, or doing some vacation, being mindfulness, and talk therapy, talk to your friends and family, even in yourself. If you're aware you are not functioning as you normally do, you know something is worrying you. This is the time to learn more about what is happening to you and perhaps seek help. This will be a great opportunity for them to be aware and prevented. Now let's proceed to number seven. So discusses the effect of mental, emotional, and social health concerns on one's health and well-being. So this time, the learners have the knowledge to avoid this kind of concern that may affect their one's health and well-being. They will determine that mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act. It also helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make choices. Mental health is important at every stage of life, from childhood and adolescence through uh, adulthood. This will guide them to be careful and cautious, particularly with themselves. So now let's proceed for number eight. Demonstrate skills in preventing on managing teasing, bullying, harassment, or abuse. So developing one's learning skills 
um, learning skills rather to protect themselves from a stranger, including social emotional safety skills, safety uh, leadership strategies on positive intervention and coaching skills. This development skills will serve as tailored support that addresses the safety and precaution for dealing with specific types of bullying such as social aggression, cyberbullying, adult to adult bullying, and prejudice based bullying and harm. So let's proceed for number nine. So identifies appropriate resources and people who can help in dealing with mental, emotional, and social health concerns. This is considered as advantage for learners' consultation. They will not hesitate to go to counseling, support groups, and medicines who can help the emotional problems or mental illness condition. If they may have ongoing emotional problems, they could easily trace of a doctor's specialization that help them find the right type of treatment. So, that's all my part. Thank you. And other quarter learning will continue to discuss with my co-members. So hello everyone, once again, I am Maria Plaza and for today, I will talk about the second quarter of grade 5 curriculum. So here is the content. Under the content, we have personal health growth and development. So number one, changes during puberty. So they will talk about the time when a boy or a girl becomes sexually mature and on what will be those um, changes when puberty occurs. Number 2. Puberty-related health myths and misconception. Now when we say health myths, those are some distorted beliefs regarding the issues of health within the family. Example, pimples are a result of being unclean. Well, both girls and boys can get pimples even though he or she always clean his or her face because it's caused by hormones. Number 3. Puberty related health issues and concerns. So in this part, it talks about the common issues and concerns about puberty and on how to deal with it. Number 4. Self-care and management of puberty related health issues and concerns. In this part, it talks about how to take care of yourselves when a boy or a girl is dealing with puberty and on what are the things to do about it. Number 5. Sex and Gender In this part, it talks about what are the changes that may occur according to their sex and gender. So now we have the content standard. So the learner demonstrates understanding of mental, emotional, and social health concerns. Performance standard. The learner practices skills in managing mental, emotional, and social health concerns. Now, let us move on to the learning competency. Number one describes the physical, emotional, and social changes during puberty. When we say the physical, um, those are some changes that boys and girls may have, like um, boys may get um, taller there will be also changes in shoulders for boys there are also changes in organs hairs brains and many more now we say emotional so their emotions may become um, stronger and more intense and for the social changes it is how they may think about and relate to family and friends now, the best way to make them easily describe following puberty is to show them videos about physical, emotional, and social changes during puberty because representing examples with pictures can help them describe a specific thing quickly. Number 2. 
accepts changes as a normal part of growth and development. So for example, the teacher should be patient and be open-minded to listen to the concern of his or her pupils or when they share any changes that they may have and some of the mentioned changes during class. Number three, describes common misconceptions related on puberty. For example, a myth that girls should not be allowed to play or touch pickles during menstruation because it makes the individual experience pain during menstruation. So, and of course, they need the guidance from their from teacher and parents to deal with puberty properly. Now, let us move to number four. Assess the issues in terms of specific I mean, scientific basis and probable effects on health. So, um, some of the individual experiencing puberty experience mental health issues with early puberty. So, the teacher must be able to make his or her students understand this part clearly to avoid um, panics and misconception. Number 5 describes the common health issues and concerns during puberty. So as one continues to develop, certain changes may affect one's body. So there should be activities like identifying some health issues through representing actual printed images in the class, followed by discussing also some concerns concerns rather related to the um, topic. Number six accepts that most of these concerns are normal consequence of bodily changes during puberty, but one can learn to manage them. So, to help the students accept those um, changes, this must be discussed concisely and they must be given some tips on how to manage it. The teacher may also let the students watch um, short videos about some students or children like their age giving or sharing their experiences or some views about this to help them accept those changes. Number 7. Demonstrates empathy for persons undergoing these concerns and problems. So since teachers must be the role models, they should be the first one to show what is the proper behavior when they have seen some individuals undergoing those problems because there are really some students who likes to tease their classmates so the teacher must know how to discipline them to avoid bullying in the classroom. Number 8. Discusses the negative health impact and ways of preventing major issues such as early and unwanted pregnancy. So the best for this is showing and explaining some pictures of some individuals who are having a hard time due to early and unwanted pregnancy to discourage them that it is not yet good for them. This topic must be discussed truly since this is also a very serious part for young children. The correct time when someone should be able to get pregnant or make a girl pregnant for boys must also be tackled to spread awareness to the children to lessen the number of um, teenagers having early and unwanted pregnancy. Number 9. Demonstrates the ways to manage puberty-related health issues and concern. So example for this is body odor. So the teacher may first tell them to understand why there is this kind of change as they reach puberty. So simply because it is due to increased perspiration and bacteria resulting, resulting to bad odor or body odor. So the teacher can present in the class some um, virtual or printed examples to prevent it like present, representing images like an individual taking a bath regularly and applying deodorant. So the teacher must also give reminders to students not to bully their classmates when they encounter some of them having body odor. Instead, give tips on how to approach someone properly in order not to offend them. Number 10. Practices proper self-care procedures. 
So after discussing what are the proper self-care procedures, a teacher may be asked to the students to give a short role play regarding to the chosen different self-care procedures to enhance their understanding about this topic. Number 11. Discusses the importance of seeking the advice of professionals or trusted and reliable adults in managing puberty-related health issues and concerns. So this is better when the class will watch videos from YouTube where professionals are trusted and like the adults giving advice on how to manage puberty related health issues. Number 12 differentiates sex from gender. So now when we say sex, it is categorized as female or male. For the biological and psychological characteristics of male and female. When we say gender, those are the characteristics of women and men constructed socially, such as roles and norms, behaviors, and it varies from society to society and can change over time. So this must be discussed accordingly to avoid misconceptions about sex and gender. Now let us proceed to number 13. Identifies factors that influence gender identity and gender roles. So this can still be a form of presenting video downloaded from YouTube with the guide of the teacher. So the teacher must expound every factor mentioned in the video to deepen the understanding of the student. So the teacher must also educate his or her students regarding on um, the friends they go with because those are also one that can influence them. Though there are also children who is having identity crisis at young age as a teacher, he or she must also impose gender equality and be open-minded as his or her students share um, their experiences. Number 14. Discuss how family Media, religion, school, and society in general reinforce gender roles. So after the students understand the topic about gender roles, the teacher can discuss how family, media, religion, school, and society reinforce gender roles. So while asking or letting students share their reflections or feedbacks or any comments with the teacher's guide. So the teacher can also let his or her students ask his or her some questions as she discusses the topic. Now, in the last one, number 15, gives an example of how male and female gender roles are changing. So after giving examples, the teacher can ask permission to his or her students who might have any changes about their gender if it is okay to them to share their experiences or the influences, influences that um, made his or her views um, change as he or she grows. And also if there's no student is having a change in their gender roles, the teacher can also show videos related to this topic. So that's all for me. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. I am Arian May Sagon, and I'll be going to discuss the continuation of our report. So now let's proceed to Grade 5, Third Quarter. For the content, Substance Use and Abuse. First, Nature of Gateway Drugs. So what is Gateway Drugs? Gateway Drugs are introductory habit-forming substances that give way to more severe drug use. Cigarettes and alcohol are the gateway drugs of our society today. When young people experiment with cigarettes and alcohol, it often opens doors or gateways to stronger, more dangerous drugs and to, and to a situation where these drugs are readily available. Second, effects of gateway drugs. The learners should know the effects of gateway drugs. So, what are those? It can be behavioral problems like being aggressive, having hallucinations, 
being impulsive, and so on. Third, impact of the use and abuse of gateway drugs. The learners should know the impact of gateway drugs. It can be mental confusion, having weak immune system, stroke, problems with memory, which make daily living more difficult. Fourth, prevention and control of use and abuse of gateway drugs. The learners must know how to control and prevent these substances. So first, they must examine the risk factors. What are the impacts and effects of these substances to our lives? Second, avoid temptation and peer pressure. Because pressure is one of the major factors why teens use substances. Third, we must teach our learners to not be ashamed in consulting our medical needs to professionals. A professional will provide us with healthy coping skills to alleviate the symptoms without turning to drugs and alcohol. For content standard, the learner understands the nature and effect of the use and abuse of caffeine, tobacco, and alcohol. For performance standard, the learner demonstrates the ability to protect one's health by refusing to use or abuse gateway drugs. For learning competency, first, explain the concept of gateway drugs. Second, identifies products with caffeine. Third, discusses the nature of caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol use and abuse. Fourth, describe the general effects of the use and abuse of caffeine, tobacco, and alcohol. Fifth, analyzes how the use and abuse of caffeine, tobacco, and alcohol can negatively impact the health of the individual, the family, and the community. Sixth, demonstrates life skills in keeping healthy through the non-use of gateway drugs. Seventh, follows school policies and national laws related to the sale and use of tobacco and alcohol. demonstrate understanding of basic first aid principles and procedures for common injuries. While for the performance standards, the learners practices appropriate first aid principles and procedures for common injuries. So, the learners are expected to demonstrate and practice the basic appropriate first aid principles for common injuries such as wounds, burns, or muscular injuries. When we talk about basic first aid principles, it refers to how to preserve life, how to prevent deterioration, how to call for medical assistance, how to apply relevant treatment as well as to promote recovery. Now let's move forward to the learning. 
as we can see, there are three learning competencies. It is to explain the nature and objectives of first aid, to discuss basic first aid principles, and to demonstrate appropriate first aid for common injuries or conditions. To sum up, learners are expected to gain knowledge, discipline, what is first aid all what are its objectives, nature, and principles, as well as how to make immediate action, taking responses, 